Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Jadav Vidana Center and the opening of the 8th Annual Taoist Gathering. Um, I'm Charlene, and I'd like to give you just a little background to the Dallas Center and to the Dallas Gathering. Um, every year we say, do we really want to do that again? <laughs> but each year uh, we are encouraged to revisit Dr. Fang's original vision, which was after we first got the center up and running, that there should be a way to take Jadao and Jadaoism and open it to a larger community and also open our community to other Taoists uh, around the country and around the world. Because one of the richness of Taoism, as we know, is that no two Taoists will see it exactly the same. <laughs> and that's what makes it provocative and allows us to take our own internal thoughts and philosophies and prejudices, if you will, uh, and examine them and say, ah, oh, maybe it's not quite the way I thought it was, and to open additional windows to our own growth and our development. The first annual Taoist gathering was supposed to happen in 2000. And I remember meeting with a group of about eight students. Um, we had been doing the last Friday of the month Dao, study of the Tao with Dr. Fang for two years at that time. I'm getting lost in the evolution of time. <laughs> but we all met at a Chinese restaurant. And Dr. Fang said, you know, this is what I'd like to do, and I'd like to call it a gathering. It's not a conference. It's not a congress. It's not an association. It's not a church. I want to have a gathering of people that want to explore and learn more about Taoism and to share that. And so we did a lot of planning. And then this building sort of appeared on the horizon. And we said, okay, we can go rebuild that old radio shack <laughs> or have the uh, first... Dallas Gatherings. So we started the Dallas Gatherings in 2004, and this is our eighth one. Um, its vision has always been the vision that Dr. Fang brings to it, which is bringing together many different kinds of minds and paths to help nourish wherever you are on your own path. So you're sitting right now, for those of you that this may be your first time here, but I don't think I see a first timer. Is there a first timer here? There's a couple of that's right. Chris came all the way from Chicago to be a first-timer. <laughs> uh, Jadao Guan is originally the dream of Dr. Wei Feng, Dr. Alex Feng's father, uh, born in China from a long lineage of Taoist scholars, thinkers, philosophers. And he imbued his son Alex with Taoism from the time that he was a very small child both the philosophy and the teachings, but also the martial arts and the healing practices that are part of the tripartite of Taoism. And when the family came to the United States in the 60s, um, Dr. Fang, I think, was expected to become a rocket scientist or a lawyer or something like that. <laughs> A physicist, there we go. <laughs> and I think he tried that for a very brief period of time. And then felt his culture and the healing path as well as his martial arts to be a much more comfortable place for him to, to grow and to be. And so he started his martial arts school in 1973, started his clinical practice a year or two later, right before acupuncture became legalized in California by working with a couple of physicians who allowed him to practice, even though acupuncture wasn't quite considered legit yet. And he worked to help make that happen, of course, in 1976. Through his martial arts school and his healing practice, he always brought the concepts and the ideas of Taoism, and certainly the Taoist practices of how to be healthy, how to live a long life and become immortal. <coughs> But he didn't really focus on the spiritual aspect of it by itself until he began the meditations the last Friday of the month in uh, 1999. So the last Friday of every month since then, we've been here. Uh, originally, 
had a Quaker church actually, and then we were here. <laughs> and it's really been an exciting time, I think, for certainly for the two of us. I remember the first time we had the Taoism class here in the new center. We were in Oakland, not in Berkeley. And uh, we were here, and it was five, seven, seven. And I said to Alex, what if nobody comes? What if we have this wonderful class here on this last Friday of the month and nobody comes? He said, then I guess it'll be you and me, and we'll have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's really the way his vision has nurtured the center, that the people who are here are supposed to be here. Uh, we hope the others will find their way here. And I know that we'll be... Uh, additional people over the next two days. We were really blessed today to have Ken Cohen come and speak about Taoist, external Taoist Chi, how to be an effective healer, and I think it kicked off the gathering in a very uh, wonderful and meaningful way. Uh, without further ado then, I'd like to turn the class over to uh, Dr. Alex Thank you, Shani. Continuously, over and over and over again, without you know, having to do anything. So, working better? You're not able to hear me here, some empty seats in there, fine. So, as people who are first time here, I saw some first time. What did you hear about? Uh, Dr. John Meter's radio show. Radio? Dr. John Meter's radio show. I think it was Dr. John Meters in person. Yeah. So, anything else? Is that it? I think Chris from Chicago saw it me. Empty vessel. Empty vessel. Wow, nice. <laughs> Recently, we were in uh, Italy for Chico Congress Conference. Uh, Italy's people are delightful. Really, really. Dedicated into the means they study, they, they go to China, they live there for years, and they learn the language, and they like, really dive into it. There was a panel of people who were speaking on uh, Qigong, so a physician, a physicist, uh, a homeopath, no, a yeah, yeah, homeopath, or homeopath, and a biochemist, and a, a few Qigong teachers. And the physicist uh, spent like, most of the time, more of the time, talking about how uh, how we think things are real or unreal. That's real or unreal. And the first met Charlene, the same question came up, is this, this is real? So that's the question that, uh, that we often ask. Is your experience real? Or you just made it up? Or is there something that Hallucinating. Uh, so, immortality is a big subject, and there are few places that uh, offer an insight into this um, subject matter. Some people say it's a state of mind. Some people say, no, oh, you can actually do this. There's some animals that, that as they grow older, cellular, they don't change. And, uh, DNA structure doesn't change. They, Young lobster, I think it's the same as an old lobster, unless somebody eats it or cellular is similar. So their uh, nature itself tells you there's a whole uh, revolving cycle. Some people say, no, it's really just a, really just you're 
know, if you remember your mom, if you remember your dad, you remember somebody you love, that's immortality. Right? You call them back. Um, they don't exist anymore in the physical way. So there's many questions about all of, all of the subject matter. This is a wonderful place to discover um, for yourself. Uh, there was a point where in my life I thought, well, you know, what would it be like? That sort of gets you going. Well, if if you were, then what? What now? <laughs> <laughs> so I would recommend that you take that posture. You know, I am a model. I was going to have a little, little <laughs> something <laughs> in the chair. Something. <laughs> 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 Experiences that tells us there's something more than what we consider this as real. And we explore that. And we test, test reality and see where it takes us and who we are. Recently I was involved with a business class, learning about business, which is like <laughs> really. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just plug along, you know, you do what everybody else does, you pay taxes, and learn to make a living, and all that stuff. And then there are ways to look at look at business as a lifestyle. Uh, it's like, whoa. And what this wonderful person named West uh, said is that, okay, let's just say you have lots of money now. In the past, you haven't made money. You had what we call poverty consciousness. Not just economically, but there are things that you do to yourself that you diminish the wonderfulness that you have, the potential that you have inside yourself. And I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm whatever. I'm not whatever. And you know, all that stuff that hinders you. But let's say you have it now. And what the question that he poses is exactly the same question that I pose is what now? Let's say you are billionaire. Who are you? Are you the same person before you were rich? Are you, are you kind? Are you, are you mean? Are you disenchanted with the world? Are you angry? And who are you now? And same thing with this state of being that we propose. If you're immortal, what, how would you be as an immortal? I look at all of you, oh, hello, you mortals. Who are you? Who are you? How would you be? Would you be different? Would you transform and, and learn differently? Would you do things differently? Would you change? You know, we all come with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Last week, uh, not last week, last class, somebody in this class actually passed out leaflets promoting themselves. I said, well, that's interesting. You know, it takes a lot of this, but that's really, um, what do you call it? Shameless self-promotion. Shameless self-promotion. <laughs> so that, that's, that's an interesting concept. That, to, 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 you know, go to a, it's like me going to the Catholic Church and say, I really go to Dallas. And, uh, and, uh, and more than that, follow me. So, as a general rule, I have two requests for people who speak at the conference. And they're just general suggestions. One is just, just be yourself. Just, you know, just do your thing. And like, enjoy yourself and do the best that other people enjoy. And 
don't criticize um, about other people's this and that. Learn from all you can. When I go to China and learn from my teacher, they always say to me, welcome. Welcome. Whatever other teachers have taught you, that is great. That's what brought you here. But let me show you what we have. Mm -hmm. Very simple. No one knows that I'm very better than me. Leave that behind. What a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So we recommend the same. Just come with an open mind, open heart, and just say, well, what do you have to say? You may agree, you may not agree. It might open you up totally and change you altogether. And the second piece for speakers, at this point at least, and this may change, is we I recommend don't come from a place of fear. Don't come from a place of fear. Oftentimes fear is a good instrument. You know, it makes you listen. It makes you behave. But at the beginning, we say, you know, just take it easy. Uh, come from a place of, uh, of kindness and, and welcoming and love and all of that. Instead of having to scare people into uh, a different frame of consciousness. And for students, we ask the same thing. You have to go with an with equal uh, frame of mind. We're all here as, as an illusion, as the Taoists would say. So enjoy the illusion. Just, just play with it and go along with it and see. Just observe. Be yourself and observe. And participate fully. I'm really, really interested in expanding this community. Um, as Taoist, as a general rule, we suggest we don't make people do things. And of course, if you make people do things, usually they do, and we have a great organization with lots of money. Try to do it differently. We're going to try to expand without having to make people, but invite. And the only way really to invite is through yourself. So I encourage you to uh, invite. invite. Invite people that you enjoy being with, and invite people that you think have something to hear, something to learn from um, this school of thought, this perspective. This place was created with my father's vision that it is a place of views, perspective. One, to know what one means view. It's a perspective. There's no right or wrong. It's just a way of looking. And the way of looking also reflects the way you are. So what you see, or you interpret what you see, really is who you are. So all the things that you say, that you observe, it is with lots of drama, that's who you are. If everything's very peaceful and kind of dry, that's who you are. So we encourage you to discover who you are in the midst of all of this. Taoism is really interesting in that it covers so many areas. We're talking about Ken Wendili, talk about the poetry of the sky and the logic of the earth. We talk about medicine. We talked about healing of yourself. We talk about this thing called qi, a dao, that we can, which cannot even be grasped and named. In olden days, the character qi is written in many different forms. One of the forms actually means no fire. No fire, traditional character for Wu Qi. Wu Ho. No fire means Qi. What does no fire mean? No fire usually represents no fire of desire. So you eliminate I want. Uh, you actually, which is very, very hard to do, but you eliminate I. Have a perspective that it's not I nor us. It's just a perspective of 
aim, aim with. This exercise that we do in the Chivo class, we have people connect together and walk around without words. The whole exercise has to be done without talking. And it's interesting how different forms collectively this takes place. It's different each time, depending on who you are with, depending on the size of the room, depending on the mood, so on and so forth. Each time is different, and yet there is a form that takes place among people among people who don't talk to each other, among people who have a, sort of a collective ideas of how we want to be with each other. So we recommend be comfortable with yourself. Be connected. Be connected to the things that you're going through, the feelings, your thoughts, even your boredom. I remember once there was a Swami. Uh, Swami made a statement on board subject of the night. <laughs> How could you be bored? What does that mean to be bored? I'm happy, I'm sad. Taking any one aspect of the emotion and attaching yourself to that, letting it lead you here and there. So when you say, be free. Be free. You come with a lot of stuff and just lots of interesting stuff that will happen at the conference. Because it is a subject matter of is a subject matter of the spirit world. So you will have experiences of that. Uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, your senses will be heightened. Uh, your, everything will be heightened. Just enjoy yourself and uh, observe yourself. Just see what, what, what comes out, what changes takes place, and how, how you are with each person you meet. Sometimes People provoked. I remember when I first met you me. So many other things that I've said. So I began to, began to uh, appreciate his provocativeness. And once I understood that, wow, such a nice man. Such a nice man. I was with a, a friend yesterday, and the friend was teaching the class, and still new in teaching, and he made some mistake along the way. Another person get up and leave the room. But this person who was teaching thought, well, how rude. How rude you leave. Show me my confidence. And so we had this long conversation about, well, if you were, everybody makes mistakes. That's part of the, part of the fun of, of life. If you can see what mistakes you can make, or you can change. But if you were, if you were, charge of the teaching. And then if people come and go, it really shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. Why would this one person make you feel like you're incompetent? Or why would this person make you feel like you're great? I have a good friend, a physician, who taught me something really nice. He said, be aware who you stand next to. If you feel shorter, because they're taller. It's a problem. If you feel taller because they're shorter, it's a problem. So don't let who you stand next to be the guide of who you are. But I also say, yes, yes, hang around people that you feel good with. Yes. So I was uh, in Italy. This other Qigong teacher says, well, in that case, you should only hang on people who are healthy. Right? If you're unhealthy, you may get unhealthy alongside with them. I thought, well, well, what about Wei Qi? What about protective energy that you have naturally? We all have that in terms of Chinese medicine. 
It's a natural part of who you are. That's how we defend against cosmic violence. Like me. So, it all has to do with your framework, with your perspective of how you decide to relate. I really uh, enjoy these conferences. Somebody asked, are you going to learn anything? I always learn something. And on the way over here, Salada says, you know, along the way, first you have a teacher and you have a master you follow a number of years. You dedicate yourself to that school of thought. Then you realize everything that comes your way is your teacher. Uh, yes. We talked about cookie lady. regular student when the last Friday of the month is. <laughs> <laughs> she shows up. She insists on sitting through the class. Even though most of the time she falls asleep and snores loudly. It's a great reminder. What I have to say is not so important. <laughs> subject matter that's difficult to talk about. Yesterday I was in the class and I met a Chinese man named Alex. I said, I can't remember your name. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, we have a conference this weekend on the subject of Yang Shen. Yang Shen, he understood Yang is nurturing. Shen means life. So in the Taoist culture, Yang Shen is a 
crucial part of the study. But Yang Sheng leads also to Chang Sheng Bu Lao immortality. So when I mention Chang, Chang Sheng Bu Lao immortality, he just laughs. He thought it was the funniest thing. Wow. Please come. I hope he comes and, and share his, uh, his perspective about all of this. But difficult subject matter takes time to, to dwell into think about. And that's why we invite people who are able, who have done this, to churn their brain and their life. And first goes to China to find something real for this particular conference. Last conference, he had a marvelous, just a wonderful, wonderful journey that he took us through, through painting, through art, through history, through identification of clothing and object, about stories of people and the world turning upside down at the end of the Taoist gamble. What wonderfulness there is to, to share uh, in that way. It's, for me, it's like bliss. <laughs> like more than joy, it's a, it's a good thing. But it does require changes all of us. We have to be able to change. We were talking, I was talking to Ken Cohen, and one of his Taiji teachers was the student of Chen Zhijiang, Feng Zhijiang. Feng Zhijiang was a lineage person from the Chen style that created his own Kunyuan Taiji. Kunyuan is like before Ying and Yang. State, possibly even before Wu and um, the question came up, uh, what's the essence of Tai Chi? And Feng Zhichang, when he came here, he had some very simple thing to say. He said, Zhuan. Zhuan. Zhuan means turn or change. 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 Just change. So we did this exercise where we you know, put fingers together and run around. And oftentimes people are uncomfortable with being dragged or they're not comfortable with their hip. So I always say be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, change. Change. The operative word in Taoism is E. E means change. E also means easy. E is easy. Don't make it hard. Yi Jing, book of the scripture, the sutra, easiness. Change. So why not? Why not? Why hold on to your ideas, your ways of living, what's been passed on to you, all the, all the suffering that you have to endure because you're loyal to a idea? Yeah. Literally, I was treating a family. Mother and the son. Mother has asthma. Son has asthma. So I said, so what else in the family has asthma? Yes, my mother and grandma have asthma. Well, how's the relationship? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but we say, if you have something that hasn't been resolved, it gets passed on. Not just to your children and your children and your children and your children. It just gets passed on. So whoever we meet, somebody's talking about, why is the corporate world so nasty? Do they have to learn this? Or do they bring it with them? That's how they have to with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's a, it's a dynamic, it's a, it's a relationship, it's a, it's a way of being. So we say, change. Change. Once you change, once you change for yourself, the spell is broken. Whatever held you is gone. Not only for you, for whoever passed it on to you. Because now there's no longer a hold of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit. And more than that, once you learn, anybody you meet, they're free from that. So, it's a good thing. Yes. Uh, I thought 
uh, um, ask about the physical practices and how they may um, uh, enable that. Because it's, it's interesting to hear the thoughts and the, and the words, but sometimes they're kind of like raindrops bouncing off the roof. Sink in. Yeah. It's one form. Mm -hmm. I uh, had a patient once who had pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium, which is a cover of the heart. In Chinese medicine, the cover of the heart communicates that directly to the heart. So when you talk to the heart, you talk to the pericardium. Uh, and they strip them of the pericardium. Mm -hmm. uh, when you take his pulse, it was like a raindrop in the tin roof. So yes, for some of us, that's our experience. For others, we can whether you do exercises. We say this in, 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 in Beidan practice, there are a couple of things. One is qi, qi, moving qi. Things that move you, make your qi move brings you to the place of realization of yourself as qi, as shen, as qing. Whatever, when you are now in tune with yourself. But there are many practices, whether it's tantric, whether it's nutrition, herbal medicine, acupuncture, acupressure, qigong. All of this takes you to a place within yourself. But we say there are two schools of thought. One is harmony. Live in harmony with yourself. And the other school is transcendence. But none of this is that important, including harmony. It's just a thought. We say everything is in nian zi one thought away. The tin roof and the rain is no different than. So, Guan Yin was walking down the street. Everybody knows Guan Yin. Who does not know Guan Yin? Guan Yin. Guan Yin. They probably think of Guan Yin. Guan Yin. They know Guan Yin. She actually has the same name as the center. Guan, her name is Guan. She thought Guan, same Guan. Perspective. Uh, sometimes she's called Guan Shi. She means the world. Yin means sound. Observing the sound of the world. Carrying people across the ocean of bitterness. So she was mm, uh, walking down the street, and two monks were arguing with each other. One monk, I'm sure you heard this story before, those who, those who have studied this, kind of like Zen stories. So one monk says, You know, see that flag up there? It's flying. It flies because it wavered because of the wind. It moves because it wants to move. And as it its own accord, its nature is to wave and to move in concert with the wind. They turn to Guan Yin. What is it now? It's your hearts that's waving. Nothing to do with the flag, the wind. So, Stretching. Stretching is so painful. It's not my favorite. <laughs> it's just darn painful. So my teachers always said, you know, you're really not stretching just your tendons. You're 
not stretching just your muscle and your sinew. You're not just stretching your channels. You're stretching your mind. Okay. <laughs> this list of painfulness is to stretch my mind so pain doesn't exist. All right. Very good. If you can stretch your mind, you can stretch time. No longer the pain has immediacy to it. If you can stretch time, why? Are you immortal or aren't you? <laughs> so it's just an idea that you can entertain yourself with. And we all have our work to do. We all have our questions. We all have our stuff. So, do it. Just, just do it. I was talking to a child once. I was something. I said to the child, I'll try, I'll try. The child was six years old looked at me and said, there's no trying. <laughs> <laughs> Two years old, walked up to a woman who was in tears. I said, Hi. The woman broke out of her tears and responded, Hi. The minute the woman responded with joy and light in her heart, a young child, two years old, the way. Mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Don't be attached to what you think you're accomplished. Good deeds you do in this world. Good. <laughs> we were at a convent in Italy. They run by the nuns. I didn't know there was a curfew. So 11 o'clock, we should be home. But they go to bed at 8.30. So some friends took us out and I said, I'm going to meal, came up. Came back at one o'clock, doors unlocked. Dark. Well, I don't know if this is out of the hotel. I come in, remember that eyes. So we call. And the man says, We've been asleep for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we walk in there and then we can be the next day and say, I don't know what that means in Italian. <laughs> I understood. <laughs> but we all have our disciplines. We all have our ways of being. As said in the meditation space, everyone is divine. Just something divine. The nuns came, they bowed, said some prayers, and they just sat down. And the room was totally silent. As still as you can be. Wonderful place. <laughs> so, <laughs> once again, welcome everyone. Any questions while we go into meditation? Enjoy yourself. No lots of questions. You will have experiences. Sure, some of you will be you know, very upset about certain things, and some of you will be like uh, confused. Some of you will be like delighted. Some of you will be not sure. What is this about? Some of you are like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> so much is happening so quickly to me. Yeah, let's enjoy this. So I want to help, I want to help. 
can't do a Saturday, but not Tuesday, not Thursday, and not between one and five. <laughs> so we have to work with all of that. Uh, conditions, we call it. And um, a lot of people want to be recognized for their help, which righteously so. I can't remember people's names. <laughs> <laughs> so please receive my gratitude now and forever. <laughs> uh, volunteerism. We do believe in uh, very much in many other traditions, service. Service of helping, not for the sake of. So if you're going for the sake of this and that, to be recognized, to get some coins, promote yourself, sell products. Just, just, just be aware. Everything loops around. Getting old and one of the nicest things is that you can see things loop around. Something that happened 30 years ago. You see it moving around. Oh. We say if you grasp the essence of things, it makes it very easy. Observe the essence of things. When I dissolve anything, dissolve the essence. Suggest, I don't know if sure is a good word or not, you are guided and guarded. You're safe. Otherwise, you wouldn't be. So, uh, explore. There are many, many, many levels. Many, many. Journey to the West. And 
this monkey learn many things and travel and learn all kinds of magic tricks. And when he was still a monkey, he was very bored. So he, was, he was next to a lake. And the lake contemplated of all things, ending his monkey life. That moment, the bird came out with some fruit this morning. I'm surprised there was life in this water. Another bird came out with some other kind of fruit. He said, I must take a chance to dive into this lake and see where it leads and where are these things coming from. Where are this stuff, these fruits coming from? Why do they know it and I don't? So he dove into the lake on this enchanted land. In this enchanted land, there's no, there no harshness, there's no, no animosity. So he lived there for a while and got very bored. And he says, I need company. He goes out and told him, all the monkey, I can take you to this enchanted land, but there's two things you gotta do. One, you have to take a chance.
give me, 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 give me knowledge, give me the state, give me realization, give me abundance of love, give me good sex, give me money, give me, give me, give me. Another student came to me. She went to a teacher and he said, I want truth. Truth. Please give me truth. And the teacher responded, Go beyond truth. So the character of doubt, somebody asked me today after James Cohen's class, the character of doubt, the different ways of writing, brass writing. Standard writing in many different forms throughout our centuries. And the century is about the self that moves. The self that moves. In harmony, transcendence of differences, yin and yang. That's the radical. It is meant to teach a lesson just. There are many things you can learn. I say, go for it. Discover your own wonders. If you don't have any, borrow somebody else's. <laughs> In our culture, stealing is a compliment. Because it means you're able to gain something from somebody else. Of course, they have to show it to you for you to steal it. Of course, you have to take a chance and recognize that something good that you want. And so we give gratitude for those who give us. So we say, you want to cheat to get the knowledge? Go for it. You want to steal? Go for it. Remember the source. Remember the source. Just remember the source. When I was very young, somebody is kind doesn't mean you're stupid. Just because somebody is aggressive doesn't mean they're not fearful. Remember the source. Catch the essence. Catch the essence. Any questions before we go? <laughs> no better place to be.
Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> Colorful. 